Hello, hello. Welcome to the Bryson Wen Pod. I am... Hello, Wendell Holland from Wendell Holland. <laughs> hello, Wendell Holland from Bryson. Hello, Wendell Holland from Bryson Wen Present. It's somebody, some, it's some number I don't know. Hello, Wendell Holland from Bryson Wen Present. It's another, I don't know these numbers. It's all good. What's up, Bryce? How we do? Jesus. Jeez, they calling me on my iPad. Hello, Wendell Holland from Bryson Wen Present. Jeez, they calling me on. Hold on. Hello, Wendell Holland from Bryson Wen Present. Jeez, I don't know what I don't know which phone it is, Bryce. They're getting hello, Wendell Holland from Bryson Wen Present. I don't know this number either. I should, I need to stop answering. <laughs> that being said, I'm Wendell Holland. Welcome to the Bryson Wen Pod. And I'm Bryce Isaiah, and we are reporting live from the Twitter Survivor Streets. Indeed, indeed. Thanks for calling this emergency press conference, Bryce Isaiah. And I am here for whatever you got for me, my friend. I we got a. Oh my gosh! Hello, Wendell Holland from Bryce and One Present. <laughs> I don't know this number. Jeez. This is Wendell Holland from Bryce and One Present. Please. Hello, this is Wendell Holland. Bryce's manager. Well, needless to say, while Wendeezy is handling his phone conversations, uh, Wendell was a trending topic on Twitter, on Reddit, and a lot of places. And so uh, let's walk through our your events of yesterday, which would have been Tuesday, October 10th. Tuesday, October 10th. We were on Reddit, too. I was on Reddit. Well, anyway, Tuesday, October 10th, uh, Bryce, you and I went to uh, the hotel that we're building and we were, okay, I know that's right. And we were filming some awesome content, right? Um, the build is, I'd say like, oh my gosh, back on the iPad. Hello, this is Wendell Holland from Bryce One Present. Wrong phone. Hello, this is Wendell Holland, Wendy's daddy. Bad number again. I don't know these people. Anyway. We were filming some content at the hotel and um, after it was a great day. We had, we had fun, you and I, and then I go home and my phone starts blowing up a little bit and my, hello, Wendell Holland, Wendell senior son, wrong phone. Hello, Wendell Holland, Bryce, they're, they're getting me brother. They're, they're even texting me. <laughs> Hello, Wendell Holland. I'm not going to answer. I'm not going okay. to let it ring. I'm going to let it ring. <laughs> okay, just okay. let it ring. I'm going to let it ring. I might need to change my number again. That being said, I get home um, or sometime after I got home or around then, I start getting these calls and text messages from numbers I don't know. Did, and, you, uh, did you answer any? I didn't answer any. I didn't answer any calls or texts. And then people are like, oh, about your number yada yada somebody put out your number and i'm just like man um my number is out there in these streets what can i do i need to do something about it so before we move forward uh so that is what happened and so let's take it a step further so if that was tuesday october 10th let's actually take it back to sunday october 8th at roughly around 9 45 p.m eastern standard time you and i were recording the challenge breakdown which is available now you can stream it on the purple pants podcast or you can listen to it here on the wendell holland youtube channel uh we were recording and in the middle of our recording what happened i got three consecutive text messages from somebody that I hadn't contacted in a very long time or followed in a very long time. We ended the podcast and we discussed, right? Uh, and after the podcast ended, what did you decide to do? I decided that based on the content of this message, I thought, you know what? Why am I just being peaceful at home and I have to be hit with a message of this content. So I tweeted that message and I said, you can unfollow someone three years ago and never look in their direction or contact them since. And then on a random Sunday night, get this spread love night. Y'all the context of those three messages were 
why did you unfollow me? Because I'm white. That's how it feels. Exclamation point. Um, and just note to the listeners and viewers, no information is given. It says RH, no number, no anything. And that's kind of sort of where you left. Oh, my gosh, my phone. Hello, this is Wendell Holland from Brighton Present. Wrong, wrong phone. Hello. Hello, Wendell Holland from Brighton Present. Hello. Hello, Wendell Holland from Brighton Present. And so you, le you left it at that. And the tweet, you know, got a lot of different tweets. We even saw the tweet from Michelle Fitzgerald saying that, you know, uh, she received a text message that night. I think it was you. You. She, she, Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> she received one. Um, there were other people in the survivor world that messaged me. They, they got into those comments, but they also messaged me saying that uh, this person messaged them as well. So. There Somebody were some people from the, from the Kagiyan realm that reached out to me as well and said that they received a message that night as well. Um, and so basically, that's really the end of the story. Um, and then Tuesday. Well, Bryce, I also think okay. that one little tidbit is I want to explain where I was on Sunday. I had a long weekend. I travel in D.C. all day Sunday. I was at the African American History Museum. That is a, a a deep place. That's a lot. You know, that's like an event. And hello, Wendell Holland, Bryson Went iPad. Hello, Wendell Holland from the Bryson Went Pod. They're now calling, they calling my, my phone now. They're calling, your phone. They're calling me on my computer. Hello, Wendell Holland. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. So anyway. Wendell Holland's best friend. <laughs> they still call it. Anyway. I was at the African American History Museum. It's like, you know, a deep museum. It's a it's a dense museum. I had a long day. Then I had to drive all the way back home from DC. So long day. Then I have to pod with you at whatever time it was late at night. I just had a long day and I think I was caught at the wrong time with this barrage of misinformed messages. So I think because I was caught at the wrong time, I decided to tweet it to the world. Like, yo, why? Why? Okay. So fast forward to Tuesday, like you said. And now um, somebody decides to put my phone number, <laughs> Wendell Survivor, and the number on their Twitter. And they blast it to their uh, thousands and thousands of followers. And this is where I begin to get lots of calls and texts and all of that. And they're still calling me, Bryce. <laughs> Hello, Wendell Survivor here. Okay. Hello, Wendell Survivor here. So let's unpack that, right? Let's um, unpack. I, I think that it's important to note that you being a Survivor winner. Okay. Uh, me being a former Survivor contestant, right? There is a code of conduct that I feel like us in the Survivor community, we hold ourselves to, right? And even in the brand of Bryson Wynn that we're creating, uh, let's just say we normally wouldn't talk about stuff like this. Like, you know, we we keep our eyes and ears to the streets. We see and we, it, we see a lot of what's happening, what's going on, but we choose not to comment on it because we just don't, right? It's not our brand. However, we are choosing to talk about it today because, oh uh, you Hello, know, Wendell, Bryce, it's, oh my gosh. it came to your telephone, right? And so I say that to say that, like, you know, we are huge and big on uplifting and supporting our survivor community, right? And we're pillars, we're leaders in that. And there is just a code of conduct, right? Where it's just like, there is a level of integrity. There's a level of trust. There's a level of respect that we hold to the other survivor communities. You know, we have many of people's numbers, addresses, like that's not even something that would ever cross our mind, right? Like that, that's just not what you do. And one, it's not okay, right? And so 
my take on it from the get-go is because, you know, first of all, Spicy Bricey, first of all, it's a couple of things I don't play about in this world. Uh-oh. One being Barbara, two mm -hmm. being Destiny's Child, three <laughs> Lil' Kim, four little Wendell Carter, and five my best friend Wendeezy, right? So first of all, when I saw that, Spicy Bricey was getting ready to come on out. He was. But Spicy Bricey didn't have to, and we'll get to that in a second. But okay. I feel like in this community of Survivor, right, the, the, the great thing about this game of Survivor, and we've seen it evolve over the years, and shout out to the coalition that you and I, along with Jatia Hart-Taylor, with Julia Carter, with Sabrina Thompson-Mitchell, with Ramona from season one, with Jamal, that we helped change the narrative of what Survivor looks like today. And Survivor has committed to 50% BIPOC because of the work that we have done, right? And so Survivor is a diverse realm. And the great thing about the game is you never know who you might play with. There are different political views. There are different social views. There are a lot of different things. And we all come together for this realm and our love of Survivor, right? We don't have to agree politically. We don't have to agree socially. We don't have to. And I think that you and I try to be leaders in that realm of we might have a disagreement. You know, the world might say we should be at odds, but I'm going to see you as the human being that you are if you see me as the human being that I am. And that is like level of trust, level of respect. And so one, I want to say to what was done to you, despicable disgusting right like it's just like i can't even fathom the words that i really want to say because what i really want to say is but you know like the depths in which a sinking ship will go right like you know when the titanic sunk you know it's my favorite movie you know, they set up the under pool after it went down was like for 15 minutes and like it will pull you in. Right. Like and it's just like the level in which dark people will go. Um, and we choose not to do that. However, we are addressing it because, listen, it come knocking. We going to answer. Hello. Um, but I, I just say that to say that it just it, it, it saddens me. Right. And. And as your friend, right, like, I'm not going to just be here and be like, oh, like, you should have never tweeted that, right? I've said that to you, right? Like, the night of, right? Like, I was like, I, you shouldn't do something like that because it's like you never know the ramifications of what a sinking tide will do. Uh, and, like, what's your response to that? Uh, you're right. I shouldn't have tweeted that. Um, had I uh, a couple days to think about it, maybe I wouldn't have tweeted it. I know that my agent has yelled at me about things that I should. Now that's your agent. Okay. Hello, Wendell Holland. I'm, yes, I apologize for tweeting that. Yes, I'm sorry. My bad. That was a real call. So I've been... I've been uh, I've been yelled at for doing things like that, and then I talked to my attorney, and she was like, she was like, Wendell, you got some big deals on the table. You don't need to allow sinking ships to take anything off of that table for you. And she's absolutely right. And again, if I had a little more time, if I didn't have a long day, if I wasn't, I guess he caught me at the wrong time or something like that. I shouldn't have tweeted that. You know, I should let it go. And usually, generally speaking, I don't argue uh, a Jay-Z quote. A wise man told me, don't argue with fools. Like, I usually, if someone is, I usually let things go. You know, my my approach is if someone is showing who they are, the world will see who they are. And you had a little bit of time that day, huh? That's the thing. And he caught me while we were potting, Bryce, and I was so... In real time, you saw that I was caught off guard. So, um, yeah, I shouldn't have tweeted it. At the end of the day, I should not have tweeted that because you don't know how far a desperate person will go. And to even that, because, you know, I'm a person that has empathy. I'm a person that I can always see the other side, right? And I said this to you, and I'm going to say it to you publicly, right? Think of a world in which 
first of all, we know multiple people got messages that night, right? <clears throat> so in my mind, right, that tells me, because first of all, you know me, right? I know you. If you start getting multiple messages from me in the middle of the night, relax. You know, I, I might have yeah. been wet. I might have been wet that whistle a little bit. And I like, you know, when I get the raps, I get the raps. And so for me, it makes me think, right? I wonder what that person's state of mind was that night, right? But then I specifically go back to your message, right? And instead of looking at it at a place of randomness, like how we looked at it, right? Say there is a world that these messages that he has received, like sending to you, why did you unfollow me? Let's take, let's consider he's being serious and his feelings are hurt. Is it because I'm white? That's how I feel. Now, take that with a grain of salt and imagine that is somebody that you maybe regularly communicate with. Maybe somebody is your friend and they are saying that to you and they're being sincere in that message. And then that person then tweets that. Like, could you understand the response? May, not, I'm not excusing the behavior, but I'm just saying like, could you, is there a world where you maybe could see like, okay, this is somebody that actually is hurt by my actions. I am a forgiving person. And if, if if I think that someone in good faith thought that I didn't like them or I unfollow them because of their race, now we're talking about a, we're, we're talking about a a rational person, you know, like in this a rational person, right. a, a rational person. Okay, okay. So give them extra grace. So um, if I'm dealing with an irrational person that somehow makes it up in their head that. Hello, Wendell Hall from Bryson One. Wrong one. Hello, Wendell Hall from Bryson One present. Wrong one. Hello, Wendell Hall. Nope, it's a text. <laughs> Hello. A text. Hello. All right. If I'm dealing with an irrational person, usually I give them a lot of space. Um, if I'm dealing with an irrational person with a mental illness, maybe I shouldn't. No, what my question to you is take this situation out. Okay. And say you are dealing with a friend that yes. is rational and that they text you something like this, that they are actually they think like, you know, like, yeah, they want to know the answer. And I then they go it. and see what like you. Tweet. How would they feel? Right. They would, they would not. OK, that friend would not feel good. That friend would feel like I betrayed their trust. That friend um, would probably be very angry with me. So I just say that to say that, and again, I'm not making no excuses. I, ain't, But what I'm saying is that there is a world in which this hurt person, right, in whatever mind state that they was in that night, randomly three years later send you a message like they're, they could have been in a space of like, what's going on, right? But again, I'm not making excuses. I'm just playing devil's advocate, right? Where I feel like. I'm with you on that. I appreciate that. Um, I would love to get into the subject matter of that text a little more. Well, I would also, we can do that. And I also believe this person, after they did that, uh, the epic fail, uh, but we'll get to that as well. They then re you know, then released another series of text messages that were trying to essentially allude to the fact that, like, you had messaged them, right? And I also feel like this person did couldn't even read the context, right? So this is the next message that they posted. And can you read what you wrote to that person? Because I also speak, I also feel like, this even more lends to the character of the person that you actually are. Bryce, and if I, I don't think that that was a text sent from me. I think it was. I don't think that was a text sent from me. Uh, so I think that was a text sent from him in October of 2022. Oh, what? 
Well, I mean, the way the phones work in the iPhones, if take it's another phone, look at that, take another look at that. Anyway, um, wait, 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 that we about in, to break this down. Maybe, yeah, because it's on his side with his text messages. It just so happens to be in green. But it's like when you message an iPhone, if it's on the opposite side. But okay, so then okay, if so, you're saying okay, so I, yeah, because the message reads: just wanted to say that yes, we may have differences politically, but we'll always feel love for you, brother. No hate here, my friend. Just feel like needed to text you this morning. Have a great day. Ah, oh, wait, and that's on your end. Yes, Bryce, I don't respond to this man. Because after I did him a solid, went on his pod, thought that he had been a changed person and open to diversity, advocated for him, asked some of my Survivor Idols to go on the pod as well, because I'm like, this is a changed man. And they're like, no, I will never do anything, deal with him. The very next season, season what, 41? We we watch him tweet survivors woke and all of this ridiculousness and vitriol and hatred based on a diversity initiative that we worked very hard to make happen. So in context, I'm receiving probably the only text that has anything to do with race that he sent that evening. I'm receiving it. Mm. The only black man probably that he texted. Why is your only text about race to me, first of all? Second of all, to, huh? I was going to say what you wanted to you, you, beautiful. beautiful. Yes. Why am I not beautiful? Um, well, I could tell you that. But Further, Bryce, if anybody knows me, they know that my whole stance is and will always be a room is more powerful if it is more diverse, not I only like a certain type of person. It's if I had it my way, I'd be sitting in a room with somebody from every single country in this world, one representative, because I think that differences, differences in perspectives and walks of life empower a room. I think that in life, because I have been diversified, I did a lot of sports, I did a lot of this, I did a lot of that, because of all these diverse things that I've done, it makes me good at stuff. And I think that bringing more diverse people in is a beautiful thing. And that's probably why we fought so hard with the diversity initiative in 2020, right? So I if I see somebody tweeting and tweeting and tweeting and tweeting about how much they hate that a space is more diverse, then I feel a, a type of way about it. And I continue to watch this person post things that I deem uh, uh, borderline racist. Hello, this is Wendell Holland. I'm on an important pod right now. I don't know you, but I will call you on phone. It's the iPad again. Nah, not Hello, the iPad. I think they're calling your phone, Bryce. Oh, okay. Did someone tweet your number out? <laughs> At the end of the day, Bryce, all I'm trying to say is I protected my space and my peace by walking away from this relationship and for me to get this text however many years later the only i don't know how many people he texted but having to do with race and me disliking a particular race i think it's very um it, i think it struck a chord at that moment that's all i got and it's very telling right um I, yeah, I agree. Um, I, I just feel like we will continue to always rise above things like this. And I, I, a, a wise person once said, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink it. True. And so, you know, we just wanted to come on here because instead of the streets talking, we wanted to give you, you know, uh, the first take as to Wendell's thing. And here's another thing that kind of sort of pissed me off about the whole situation, right? Like, um, 
you're a father now, right? Like you've got doctor's appointments. You've got things that are connected to that number. You have businesses, right? Legitimate oh. businesses on businesses on businesses. Like you've had that number for a very long time. And for you to be forced out of your number, it's like disgusting, right? And again, this point of this podcast and this video is not to bash anybody, but it's really like um, protect your peace, right? Like. It ain't worth it. Uh, and again, like, no, but, but I am saying it's like, there are, this applies to everybody that is listening. There are people on your job. There are friends. There are family members that, you know what? You need to back on up, walk away, because it's not worth your peace. Bryce, the only thing that I will leave this, this on is, like you said, I've had that number. When I message my family saying that my number is different, I mean, my parents, my sister. Um, my dad who got me the phone way back in the day was like, well, we'll talk about that. You've had that phone for 25 years. My dad got me that phone number, the last four digits, nine, four, nine, nine. My high school number was nine. I have a school record where number nine ran for 99 yards. Like the phone number meant a lot to me. Now I'm texting my best friends. They're like, nah, I had your phone in muscle memory. So that's the personal touch. But then also, like like you said, with the businesses and such, I guess my takeaway, my lesson is I'm going to take a breather before I respond to things. I usually do. In this case, I didn't. But you don't know what um, you don't know what hurt people will do. Hurt people hurt people. That and, is true. Uh, you know, I'm going to. I I'm going to. I usually tweak how I move, but now I'm going to really tweak how I move. Um, and so we are clear on season 36 of Survivor, who won? I won okay. Ghost Island season 36. Got you. So we know the prize money, right? Um, can I ask you a serious question? Yes. So if you won Ghost Island on season 36, yesterday when you had to go change your phone number. Mm-hmm. You went to a store, correct? Yes. But then you had to call somebody to get the code to the account. Who was that person? I didn't have to call my father. Okay. Are you trying to say that I'm on a family plan? I'm trying to figure out why you still on a free calls after 5 p.m. family Bryce. plan Listen with here. your dad. I'm frugal, okay? And it 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 let me add a little bit more to that. It ain't even Verizon. It ain't even AT and T. It ain't even now Sprint. you lying. Now this you lying. Man, you is on a family plan with your dad with Boost Mobile. <laughs> I feel is... like you should be faking this person Bryce? because Bryce, you ain't got to lie. Bad, like I that just took me out. I'm gonna have I to look like, at wait, you gotta get your fans. daddy cold. Why? Uh, 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 it, we're on the same plan. No, 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 no. Y'all not on the same plan. You are on his plan. Now, no, also, what if he's on my plan. What no, if he's on my plan? Okay, we can we can call Boost. Listen, we can call Boost Mobile right now. It ain't now Boost Mobile. Here's another thing that took me out, y'all. Now, mind you, ain't nothing funny, but you know I'm going to find the funny in it. What? So, when DZ is a man that, you know, normally is even keen, even, you know. Even what? What they say, even keened, even no. keen. No. Even. His levels don't change too much, right? Even king. No, even kill. Even kill. You know. Things don't fluctuate. We went on a family cruise, Wendell's family, Chelsea family, my family, and uh, we wanted to move our tables together. We asked if we could do it. They said yes. We got there. We started moving the tables together. The waiters came around. was like, what are y'all doing? Oh, 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 oh. And, you know, everybody at the table was like, what's going on? And Wendell was like, talk to me. Okay, so he's even killed. Now, how I knew my brother was a little fresh, uh, a little flustered yesterday was I went to the Twitters. And I went to the Instagram and I see this video uh, <laughs> with DZ talking about somebody leaked my number. 
the real, right? Okay. Then he's like, the real ones know how to reach me. I'm out. I was like, what the hell? Was like, that. Yo, yo, somebody leaked my number. Real ones know what's up. H tail or more. Get at me. Real ones know. I stay with more than one phone. So uh, you need to get me, hit me. I said, what? What was that video? Oh my God. Oh, look at your face. I was not upset. I just no, like, look, I got the whole upset, emoji. But you were like, I got to disseminate information quick and I got to get it out. And I don't know why in that moment you turned, I, I feel like you were in the wire from 1998 because you were just, you, the lingo you were using. Fool. My number got hacked. Don't even. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. more than one phone. The real ones hit me. Holla at your boy. Ain't nothing going to stop me. Okay? We can't stop, won't, won't stop. stop. Can't stop, won't stop, won't stop. Won't stop, won't stop. Okay? Damn, real baby. ones, Damn. if you know, hit the Android on the low. Called, I was like, what is like, I mean, but no, you just wait. Look at your face in that first. I was happy, Bryce. I was just saying, hit hit the trap phone. That's all I was saying. Hit the trap phone. But listen, uh, we appreciate you for taking the time to listen to us talk about this nonsense. Uh, but in the spirit of the spirit. What? Hey. Bryson went 45. Okay. DC, we're coming to you next. And we are officially announcing what better time. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. Wait. 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 Oh my gosh. I believe Bryce. that's Dick. That's Dayton, Ohio. Dayton, Ohio, we are coming to you for a pop-up October 25th. We've got a free panel, and we are headed to Two Social. So click the link in the Bryce and Win Instagram uh, to get all your information on the Bryce and Win Tour 45. Uh, thank you for your time, Wendeezy. Um, Bryce, I got to take this. Got to go. Oh, oh, real. oh, not the Ghost Island underwear. This is a Bryce and Win pod.